Let me just record that now. If we are recording. We are recording. Excellent. Hi, Grace. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. I've just Good. discovered gather mode on Teams and I'm enjoying it a lot. Oh, yes. Gather <laughs> mode. <laughs> Uh, Cita's joining us as well. That's very good. Excellent. Hello, Cita. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, sorry, I'm a bit late. That's all right. That's all right. I think I'm not sure whether Tom might drop in as well. We'll see. But um, great. Well, I've just done. Um, so Boyd sent me an email. I'm just waiting for that to come through. I'm sure I will get that very soon. You sent sent us my my Brighton email. Have you, Boyd? I just replied to the. <laughs> Oh, final yeah. debrief email. Excellent. I've got it now. Wonderful. I'll check. I'll check that. And the video, the video recording's in there, is it? Yeah. Brilliant. I'll get that later now. Fantastic. Okay. Well, then let me let, let let let's first of all, well done. Congratulations for um Tuesday Tuesday was it? Who's Tuesday night? I can't remember now. Yes, it was Tuesday evening, wasn't it? Tuesday evening. Well yeah, done. Yeah, fantastic. Well done. It was um, it, it came together very well. Um everything all the elements um and um the, the recording looks great i've been as i said i've been editing playing just putting some <laughs> trying to clean, clean up bits of sound but i think i've done quite a good job of that now so i think that if if boyd hasn't has a better audio recording that's that's even better but i think the sound is pretty good but certainly boyd's video quality will be better so that'll be add that to it and i'll make a pretty good recording we'll put that on our website shortly with all our credits and time so let's just let, let's crack on we've got, we've got an hour so i just want to just really uh, really hear from you um some feedback and thoughts and um it really it's just just a very honest open sort of conversation about how it went what you learned and that sort of thing and also from boyd as well i'd like to hear from boyd too uh, sort of from, from a kind of conceptual technical background to and, and thoughts about it as well but perhaps it's a good place to start might just be to talk about what perhaps what your what were, what were your intentions in, in in the residency do you think and, and what have you what do you feel you've you've got out of that or how how has that met your expectations or you know in, in any way whether it in what ways it hasn't or ways it has or, or sort of. is this is this for molly poppy and i Yes, yes, sorry, Grace. Yeah, yeah. For the for the for the gutter for our gutter snipe um residents. <laughs> mm. I think sorry, do you mind if I go first? No, go for it. Okay. Um I think yeah, I think my first I think my first initial intention was to to free up the idea of of being in a room with all of this tech and all those things. And I think like we were saying in our in our sort of first debrief chat, that actually happened a lot sooner than I thought. I think I, I thought that it was gonna have to be a longer process. Um, to respond in the moment was definitely an intention that, you know, after our first session, I was like, right, that really pumped alive. Um, I think proximity and closeness, I loved what you guys were talking about, about your work in COVID about um, hugs. And I think that was something I was, you know, maybe at some points to my detriment trying to perfect, but I love whenever we had any moments of physical contact. Those are the things that I thought was really exciting. Um, yeah, so intentions wise, yeah, I think to be a more present performer, to understand some of this technical know-how, which I <laughs> a tiny bit overachieved. Um, and yeah, to, to be more physically responsive, I think. Yeah, thanks, Molly. That's good. We'll, we'll come back to those technical, technical know-how, learning <laughs> things shortly. That's Fine. very interesting to know more about that. How, how about how about Grace, Poppy? What, what were your yeah. reflections I, on on? The I felt like I went into the process. Sorry, classically, I don't know how my internet is being, but I'm hoping I'm okay. But I feel like I went into the process like very open-minded because i had no no clue how it was all going to work and tom and i had an initial meeting and i didn't even know where the ethernet port on my router was it was that level <laughs> of technophobe so i i suppose i feel kind of accomplished to have managed to have done what we did 
I, I didn't I didn't envisage that it would actually kind of work. I thought my internet was gonna cut out halfway. I don't know. I've just had so many Zoom nightmares. Um so yeah, I feel I feel accomplished in the sense of like we actually pulled it off. I found it so interesting that it was much shorter than the other residencies. Um, because I felt like it was so dense and we were we were being ambitious. Like there was a there was a lot in there actually. Um and I just, I, I had a lot of fun. I think I went in with the intention to explore, um, explore this sense of liveness. Like, can that be achieved with Zoom? Can we break outside of the little box? And all of these things we did. Like, I never thought as a kind of physical performer, I would enjoy performing online, but it was, it was so fun. It was really fun, especially in the live performance. It was just ridiculous. I must say, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get onto this stuff, but as, as a performer, it's so weird to then shut your screen and be on your own in your room with a green screen. Uh, it, it It's kind of incon incomparable to performing live, but at the same time, there was that liveness. So yeah, that's very rambly, but I wanted to explore the liveness, have some fun and see if it was all possible technically. So I think those things were achieved, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Poppy? For you, yeah, how think, was this for you? Yeah, I think um, so. Um, Molly, Grace, and I um, really uh, very remedially played with green screens during lockdown. But literally, it was like a sheet, probably the size of you know the backdrop here, cellar taped onto the wall, and us doing little dances in front of it. So that was kind of my um, experience with yes sort of working with videos and and utilizing tech to create performance so this was just um it was a real pleasure to actually immerse myself in that world with people who actually knew what they were what they were doing rather than sort of doing it sort of a bit punk and diy um i think my biggest sort of uh revelation throughout it was um I was getting, I felt very playful, not just with Molly and Grace, but also with Boyd and also with Paul as well, um, reacting to the sounds that were coming and reacting to being flipped upside down and turned around. Like it is, I was, you can see me, I'm like giddy all the way through the rehearsals just because mm. it's it's like another dimension of play that you don't get live. Um, so I think that was the biggest kind of, oh didn't even know that was a thing that happened and that really <laughs> surpassed my expectations for sure you, you, the three of you are making it sound rather like um a, a kind of technical box that, that's sort of opening up so there's a bit of sort of getting into it but then it, might, it opens up and all of a sudden you're working together and then you sort of have to close it again <laughs> at, at the end. So you're sort of breaking the. You also mentioned about the setting up of the the green screen and this sort of thing. And then when it happens, you're you're all working together. Uh, I wonder if you can say a little bit more about about that aspect of of the. And you you were touching on it, Grace, quite a bit. bit we talking about shutting the computer down. What 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 do you think was the sort of how how much do you feel, feel that you were collaborating or you were together as it were when you were live and then when you shut it down you were back remote was was there a kind of um a sense of um of of, of personal space and network space that you were exploring can you say perhaps that's uh, in, in terms of like my my in comparison sorry I'm getting a bit of feedback so I don't know if you're getting feedback from my mic but in terms of comparison to I did like a, a zoom cabaret during during the lockdown and it ended up having to be like a pre-recorded act that I did that was then streamed through t twitch tv and there was no sense of liveness because obviously I'd had to pre-record it in the end because it was a lip sync and it wasn't syncing up with my mouth um and so it was very, that was a very bizarre experience performing or the audience thought it was live and it, and it wasn't. And so I was there kind of watching myself do a thing that I'd done a few hours ago in my bedroom. And I felt very like, <laughs> I was about to say, I felt very alone, but that's too dramatic. But I felt very much like I'm on my own. Mm. Myself do a thing that's not live and watching some other people do a thing, some of whom are live, but I don't feel connected. Uh, I'd probably, in all honesty, rather be watching telly. Um, so, and that's just how it is. And I felt like that with a lot of like Zoom attempts 
at live stuff. Whereas, I don't know, there was, yeah, there was something incredibly playful, like Poppy said, like getting, you know, setting up your room and chucking out your flatmates and blah, 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 and then suddenly coming into this space. I just found myself like shout, you know, shouting really loudly and bopping about. And I didn't even really realize until my sister was like, what on earth were you doing down there? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I definitely, there was a sense of real play and a sense of getting carried away um, that I, I, I hadn't really expected to find because I found Zo Zoom so kind of isolating and clinical before. Um, yeah, so I think, and I also felt like, I felt like connected to you, Molly and Poppy, on a like, on a very playful level, like on a mischievous level, even mm -hmm. when I couldn't necessarily see, like when you were off stage, or I knew that we were kind of thinking the same things and like having fun. It was almost like being in the wings, but in a weird way, you just couldn't see anyone, you know, or touch mm -hmm. them. <laughs> I could feel that kind of connection and then that and then I kind of wanted to be with you as soon as I'd closed my screen it felt weird that we could no longer connect so a lot of the times we would jump on a zoom and just like debrief and then kind of chat because there was no with online stuff there's not that arc of I'm in the wings I'm doing the show it's not the ritual of then being backstage and coming down off the performance it's so you just close your laptop so mm. nice that we always kind of honoured that ritual in a sense, digitally by getting on a Zoom after and kind of chatting. Mm. So yeah, that was my experience. That's really mm. interesting. So, oh, that was the word that I was exactly going to use, Grace, of the ritual. Like there was such a ritual to setting up um, for, I don't know about you, for you guys, but for me, my whole entire living room was gutted and different. So I really did feel like I was in a different space because I literally was. Um, and that yeah that ritual was so sort of built in so it was always the same and it had to be in the same place that I think then when we did enter the space there was this sort of yeah this build up it felt like actually the setting up of the tech became like a warm-up um and it was actually really nice because then I was like oh yeah I do all of these steps and then suddenly I'm in this um in this room with, with Grace and Poppy and yeah I think we've even said it a few times between ourselves haven't we of like when was the last time I saw you and I was like oh yeah well, we saw you in telepresence and then I'm like oh no I didn't see you in telepresence <laughs> like we I completely my lines are so blurred and whenever I was thinking about what we had to do for the show I was always thinking of us within that space I, I was never thinking of my body in my living room standing on a green bit of material ever um and i was yeah like really pleasantly surprised at how sort of quick that was and i think we talked about this before didn't we girls that we all felt similar to that i was always envisaging my 3d world when i was seeing where i was going um but yeah the ritual yeah it was interesting because we like grace said we always jumped on a zoom after every session because I think otherwise it just felt very, it felt very brutal, very harsh, just to be like, oh, we're gone. Um, so yeah, it was strange after the the performance to not have that. And I think had time pressures not been against us, we probably would have, girls, wouldn't we have, have met up. Um, and the the wings thing that you said, Grace, was really interesting because we were just chatting before this about um, some other bits and bobs we're doing. And we were saying like, oh, what were you doing in the wings before? And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I was dancing. I assumed you guys were dancing. And then I realized that I didn't see you. And it was really, it was really strange. But then I felt like I was with Boyd. I was like, oh, I'm not with the girls, but I'm with Boyd. And I was sort of like dancing and like, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea, Boyd, whether you could see me. But I didn't feel, I didn't feel alone, even though I was at that point, you know, not, not within the space, which sort of made me feel like maybe just the ritual setting up means even if nobody else was there. I think I'd feel really like together just by doing that setup and being in front of the screen, which was interesting and maybe a bit weird. Um, mm. But yeah, sorry, that's a long old ramble, but those are my thoughts. That's really, really interesting, really interesting. Um, I, I go on, Poppy, yeah. Sorry. Um, I definitely, yeah, I had that thing before the performance where I wasn't like Molly, I wasn't dancing around, I was like bolt straight on my mark, like ready to go but I could see the chat um people writing like I could see um Daisy writing I could see people um just commenting already and it did make me go like oh it did remind me of being being able to hear people speak when you're waiting behind a flat before you go out on stage and yeah I got quite my adrenaline was kicking in even though I wasn't 
stepping out in front of loads of people or whatever my adrenaline was still there which I found really interesting and um I had a slightly different experience because my poor partner I he was in the living he was in the bedroom sorry with um my housemate and his sister so I could hear them laughing at certain points in the show <laughs> <laughs> couldn't go oh, when I was like flying off screen or whatever um because that was an interesting element where I was like you know if you're performing to a live audience you have that immediate feedback especially if it's like this is supposed to be a joke so let's see if this works it's quite interesting being like well maybe that works I, I was lucky because I had a bit of an audio cue um, with my partner in the other room. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting element to me. But again, seeing people speak in the chat as well was just quite an exciting element that I wasn't expecting. Um, but yeah, again, I was going to use the word ritual as well. <laughs> mm. I quite liked being like, everyone get out the room. I need it. And sort of having my time with the polls setting it up I got very efficient and quick at it I don't know about, I don't know about <laughs> you really yeah yeah, yeah I managed better to better at it. it down to like half an hour well that's excellent that's brilliant that's a really good <laughs> yeah. really good um resource to, to have I'll, I'll get another quick question and I'd like to bring Boyd into it as well in this one because I think it relates a lot to his um the, the virtual director system um, and it's interesting that, that you you went for a kind of script or a, a particular narrative that actually, in many ways, is a, is a TV show, almost almost like a kind of um, talent show on the TV. Um, but but what we can't get in in TV, well, we we can see a live, we watch, we watch it as a live performance. But you were playing it out on on a sort of on screen, but but in a space as well at the same time. So it was this kind of sort of mix between what is what is almost staged as a sort of theatre piece, but is also a kind of simulation of a television programme in a way. I'm wondering if, if you thought, if, if, if there's any way that perhaps some of the things that Boyd was showing with virtual director, whether that lent itself to to the script, to what, and what, but perhaps I'm, I'm preempting my question, but um, but what 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 was it around the technology or what Boyd presented to you in the first um, uh, sessions we did when when he showed you a few examples? How did that that sort of lend itself to the to the sort of script and idea? I know you've been working with this the the sugar the sugar fix and Illuminati um, piece for some time, but what ways did the, did the software and the technology lend itself to it or change change your your direction with it? I'll go first. Um, I think, I know it's basic, but I think just being able to go to, what did we go to, six locations or something like that was instantly um, so exciting for us because that is obviously not something unless you have a huge budget that you can do in live theatre. I think the real, um, yeah, the, the, the sort of duality of having the on stage and backstage and really being able to flip between that we loved that was something that we'd sort of already had as a seed of an idea from from the stage show but I think that the the elements that were completely new to us and we what well, personally I enjoyed the most was coming out of a naturalistic space and into an abstract space so quickly so when we went from being on stage on the tv to then being you know in this sort of neon certain uh, triangles and then in the car I think that was where it was so exciting and also you know we actually didn't know exactly what Boyd was going to give us things would change and we could respond there but then have the sort of safety net of this choreography that we that we came up with I think for me that's the thing that was most exciting um also entrance and exits it literally blew my mind I hadn't even thought that of course we can enter and exit 360 um and that i just loved um and we utilized that a, a couple of times and when when boyd showed us that i think i was like whoa of course i don't need to be on this plane anymore i can um yeah free my mind a bit more <laughs> um just to piggyback on what you were saying molly yeah i definitely found it yeah i just remember the first session where you bought those renderings for the first time boyd and we were just like what that's the coolest thing just like outrageously cool um and I think it like from a performer's point of view I've never had the opportunity to actually 
feel like I was a cartoon <laughs> in the sense that I could like boing off that way or I could flip this way or I could like just like fly in from the ceiling so I think um yeah as a as an actor it helped solidify the the sort of genre of my performance style um because of those capabilities that we would have to kind of yeah with the stage show we would do blue sky thinking and then sort of figure out how we could make that with a shoestring budget and a cardboard box whereas this was like oh brilliant I get to like not censor myself ever as a performer so that was the biggest um most exciting element for me for sure with the space and yeah just it would just always make me laugh as well like little demons in the corners and things so it just every session I just um I was all yeah you felt like another performer in the space where I felt like I was wanting to like make you laugh or improv with what you were doing as well so it definitely added a different element to, to my work for sure I think I agree Poppy it's like the the liveness of that kind of interactive play is not not necess you get the play between the actor you get that kind of physical play in rehearsal but the fact that Boyd could without me knowing like whip me out the sky with a little whoop um I mean your director obviously can't do that in real life so um it would be pretty inappropriate so so that that was very fun to know that I you were just there and anything could happen to you at any any given moment it was like it made the joke immediate it made the gag immediately fun and the play was immediately there whereas when you're building and devising and creating and choreographing in the space it's like the director proposes or suggests or the actors propose something and then you try it and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't maybe it's funny the first time maybe it's not the second whereas like the gag is immediate in this space so I found that really interesting I also find it interesting that I think I've, I've trained for like years and years uh in in certain skills that were completely uh irrelevant in this space because training in movement and physical theater so it, you know this is how we're going to exit and then we'll get this sound effect to to bring that sense that it's like a graphic novel you know that's what we're going for with sugar fix we're kind of creating a live cartoon graphic novel super camp thing um whereas i didn't need to do any of that my job was kind of done by boyd um do you know what i mean like and and like with it with it, all the physical tricks that I have in my in my toolbox of how we get on and off stage, how we would make it look like the ground explodes, how we would zoom off into hell, all of those things that I spent years, you know, honing. It was quite nice that suddenly I wasn't having to use that toolkit. I, I could just stand there and it would just happen. So the mm. conservation of energy was real, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I wonder if Boyd might want to say a few things about the challenges that, that it, that it presented in terms of the technology and how the um that your, your script um really lent itself to to the idea to, to to the virtual director and how virtual director lent itself to the script boy do you want to say a bit about that yeah it's um yeah it's, it's been it was really interesting for me like i said before most of the work i've done in with the software has been with pure improv i did one scripted show before but actually, we ended up not using my software because I was still just developing it. I ended up using um, OBS um, for for that show, which had has some features, but obviously some some limitations. So this was the first time I had like a script to work with, and it was fascinating looking at how it was nice for me as a designer to be able to build up the tools based on knowing what kinds of things you would be doing so you know the I, I created the the little transitions for leaving the stage just for this show because I wasn't something that would come up before now I can see it being used in lots of different things but I never I never would have occurred to me until I was thinking about it in the context of okay this is um you know if we're going to like a, a big budget actual like you know experience you'd probably be flying in the actors um and so then you know and so so one of the exciting things for me was being able to feel like I could be a, a creative collaborative partner as a designer in a way that 
in on the stage, I'm actually not able to do as much. So my background's actually, you know, doing projections for theater, and I'm always fighting everybody in the in the in, in tech for what role video plays. And then here, it was it was interesting because I felt like, yeah, my my interest in improvisation was able to be applied as a designer in a way that no other kind of experience has let me. And I think a lot of that had to do with because of the, the way the script was written and that the three of you were so interested and willing to kind of play physically and were open for that silliness. So that, that, that to me was something that was really um, interesting. Molly, the, the, you mentioned the, the sort of being in the wings. And it's interesting because like, yeah, I, I can see all of you all the time and I'm using that as my cues and so I also have that had that same sense of like you know when it ends it's like you know where is everybody because um, it's like you know it's always like my my entire focus also becomes just this I think as Paul describes third space um, so yeah what was the original question thanks boy that's really good I mean really interesting and I think one of the things that's that's really interesting about this is that. Um, you did have so there's this idea, this, this idea that you can see it, see all the performers, but what you're kind of um, controlling, and even that what um, that you got us like to have done particularly, which we haven't done before, was to use um, the opportunity to have sort of scene changes or a kind of curtain down, as it were. So we get these kind of like sh the sugar fix, the sugar fix. Um, identity comes up and spins around on the eye and it, everyone's off stage as it were and you're actually doing a costume change at that point aren't you you're, you're changing costumes so actually there's a, there's a deliberate use for it and um it, it's sort of it's so similar in a way to a sort of very traditional sort of theater that, that would have to bring the curtain down to change change the set almost so you're kind of but because the um you know you've the actors are getting changed they're doing something else they are in the wings they're having to do something else i think that's really interesting and, and all that that timing is is really important um I, you know there's this it's kind of just a sense of how much do you, do you feel i guess i guess the question here i'm trying to find a question for this do you feel this is like the, the and you mentioned using metaphors like wings we, we use other sort of metaphors of sort of upstage and downstage or stage right and stage left what sort of how much of the sort of metaphors of theatre do you feel are present in, in what you're doing as a whole? Yeah. That's a tough, isn't it? I, I, it's hard to know whether it's because they are intrinsically linked or just because that's the medium that I've worked in most. Um, so, yeah. I'm not sure. I think when I vis when I visualize it, like what I was just sort of saying before, if I'm running through my lines and what I've got to do, I think I do see it as theatre, but I see it as in as like in the round. Like I definitely don't see it as like I've got nothing behind. I've got you know flat behind me. I think, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've never been in a theatre like that, but yeah, I would see it as a sort of like a huge space that's in the round. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's very clear, but that's how I would visualize it. What do you guys think? Like, um, experiencing it and like physiologically, I felt the same, again, like the adrenaline before the show. I definitely felt the sort of need to be live and present that I would with theater and, and um, it's different to sort of uh, acting on film. I felt different to acting on film because it was still kind of, I, I, I felt I still needed to be generous with the way I was performing um, because of the nature of the show, but also because in my head, yeah, the screen was like a little mini stage. Um, so yeah, trying to, I definitely felt like I was in theater mode rather than film mode when I was doing this project. It was, it was like tip of the, tip of my wig to the bottom of my toes, like constantly engaged. And even when I was off screen, it was like constantly waiting to be engaged again, rather than feeling like, oh, now I'm off, off to the side. Um, I felt very, um, in, yeah, just ready the entire time. So it, I definitely 
put it in the theatre box in my head, for sure. Which is interesting when you think about what I said in like in terms of conserving your energy as a performer. Actually, with what you said, Poppy, mm -hmm. it's it's a different type of engagement because you're like almost poised and ready at all times because you don't know if a rock's going to fall on your head or you're going to be spun upside down or whatever. But at the same time, you're not really moving very much. So it's almost com completely different. And I would say so much of our craft, and I noticed this with the, la the live show last week, is being huge in, in, a, in a kind of fairly small space, you know, a 70 seater or whatever. So being huge and really projecting the images and the energy out there. And then as soon as you go backstage, dialing it right down so that you can really quickly and subtly do your costume change, check what is the next scene and get back on to be big. So you're constantly shifting your energy like this. Um, and it's a real it's a real discipline to be like pretty muted and efficient backstage and then to be huge and sort of effervescent when you get on the stage. Um, whereas with this, like, you didn't really have to shift that energy. It felt it felt in a weird way and not in a bad way, like cheating, because um, I'm not having to go backstage and worrying about the rip of my Velcro as I take off my gown. It's like, Boyd has literally just gone to the eye dent and is playing some music. So I'm there pretty casually chucking on a wig and some sunglasses. So it's a completely different level of like discipline in a weird way. It was much, it's much kind of easier than performing live, but yeah, it's kind of a different level of, of tiring, I would say. Whereas in theater, you kind of complete the stress cycle, you complete the adrenaline cycle and you, you throw your energy out there. In this, you're like quite like, oh, you know, it, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. Is that, would it be okay for me? Go ahead. Um, Absolutely, Boyd. Go ahead, please, please. Um, one is so in some of the some of the environments were I said were actually flat in that it was just an act. It was just an, a flat image behind you. It looked like it had dimension, like the dressing room, but it's really just an image. Whereas um, the stage itself was a, a 3D environment. I'm wondering, did it did that affect your experience of the space? And if so, like in what ways, how did you respond differently to the differences? I think I definitely, I definitely felt that with the more 3D environments. Like as a performer, I felt I could like rotate in a circle. I could use the space a bit more. When we were traveling through the kind of uh, vibey sand dunes and the and the big geometric shapes, I felt like I had more capacity to be 3D in myself and, and utilize that this kind of plane a little bit more. Whereas definitely as soon as you feel like, oh, it's maybe a flat image, I felt very like, like this to Poppy and Molly, as opposed to like more expansive. Um, I think I think I definitely I definitely felt that and and it's kind of tough because you're limited uh, to how far obviously you can walk towards the camera you know you've got about a meter of ground you're working on however if my green screen had been huge and I'd had lots of floor I would have loved to have like run round and climbed up and down in that virtual space but it was it was quite it's it was almost like a little level of frustrating to not be able to explore its full potential yeah Yeah, it's really interesting. I didn't think about my relationship to the to the dimension of the space until you said, but I definitely it's it's tricky to say because I feel like the scenes, especially like the dressing room scene, was a bit more of a intimate scene, as in we were close and we were in close proximity to each other and it was less out here and it was more to each other anyway. So I didn't feel like I was stuck on wheels as it were going from left to right and that was it because I feel like it suited that space um but yeah thinking about it I definitely felt more freedom to as you were saying yeah explore the different dimensions of rotation and everything on the bigger on the bigger stage and again I don't know whether it's because we were further away and my whole body was in front there's so many different elements to it but um yeah, I definitely felt that sort of like liberation on the bigger 3D designed platform, for sure. 
Yeah, I feel really similar to Poppy actually. It's not something that I had thought of, but then instantly when you said that, Boyd, I was like, oh yeah, when I was in the dressing room, I mean, part of it was, I think there were slightly more choreographed moments, like I was hitting Grace and I was moving. But yeah, I, I was I was definitely more aware of being in this room and I probably was thinking more on that on that um, horizontal plane. Um, and yeah, something about, I don't know why specifically, but the last scene when we, well, not the very last scene, but when we dropped down into hell, that felt mega expansive. For some reason, that felt the most expansive for me. And I don't know whether that's because we fell in or I don't know. But yeah, that that felt like it went on forever. Like when we were sort of looking out, Grace, and being like, where are we? I just felt so small, um, which I really enjoyed. I loved, yeah, scale. I mean, just when we used to mess around and Boyd made us big and we used to just pat Poppy's head and then suddenly Poppy was huge. I think I've I've always been sort of fascinated with Alice in Wonderland sort of vibes and, and scales and I loved I loved that and the comedy that came from that and one other thing which I doesn't really fit into that question boy but I just want to throw it out because it was like one of the funnest things for me was interacting with the Mufti Day boys so having us pre-recorded I think we I, I, we loved that so so much um, and I couldn't believe how how seamless it looked I think in my head I thought it wouldn't look like that um, and I genuinely, when I'm looking over this shoulder, this is where I would have been, I felt like they were there. It was, it was quite incredible. Mm. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry, side to side. Yeah, that was a really, really clever, that was a really great scene, that. I think that worked extremely well, and, and um, but you, you got, you were allowed to light and sort of prepare that bit of video, that bit of script of them, uh, with the three of them and of course you're playing them and it's just, you know it, it's a, there's a real irony in all of that as well that was really nice um yeah i mean I, the, one of the amazing things one of the unusual things i think you've done an amazing thing is that you engaged in this residency from the very start in costume <laughs> no one else had really done that before actually for our residents they hadn't really decided on any kind of costume until the, until the very last last session almost but um, we actually started out in costume, and so you, not only did you set up your green screens, you 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 put your wigs on, and you put all your costume on, and you you went straight into it. So you, you sort of embodied this the, these characters in this space from, from the very start, which was really interesting. Just to jump in, sorry, I think that was a really important part of the ritual that we're speaking about. Yeah, but yeah. If I'd have just stood in front of the green screen in my living room, I think that sense of immersion in, in the third space would have been a bit more difficult. I think we needed to feel a bit not every day uh, to separate ourselves from that kind of everyday space of the living room. Uh, it helped so, a lot. Yeah, taking yourself out of that space physically, very physically and into this other other space you were working in just just by and the costumes were helping helping that that's really interesting to know actually i totally that agree that. Grace. and i feel like also because of what point what you created like we were always on a stage we it never felt like rehearsal like even though i know we were stepping through things because we were there and everything was made and we were in a world it, it wasn't rehearsal so i would have felt like yeah it felt completely bizarre i think if i wasn't in in costume <laughs> <laughs> One question I have, um, I'm curious, in like as an actor getting into character, one of the strange things about performing this way is that you are watching yourself, whereas, you know, in, in real life on stage, you're, you know, you're not. And I'm wondering how that affected your sense of your characters, because um, in, in some ways, it's almost like you're puppeting yourself because you're watching a version of yourself. And I'm wondering if you experienced that you know, or how that affected your ability to enter into character as compared to maybe the live stage show that you do. Um, I definitely, I almost, <laughs> especially during the dance moment because I'm choreographically uh, challenged, I was like, oh, I'm so happy. I can just watch Grace and Molly and I can just, follow them so it was a real gift in that regard um i was thinking about this as well because i think it'd be really interesting to speak to actors who were doing because the character i'm i mean it's very camp it's very we're cartoon characters so it feels quite 
Um, I don't need to go to a certain place in my head or be vulnerable or anything to do the part, if that makes sense. So it, mm-hmm. it feels because it's such a visual story as well it did I I didn't feel any um sense of like oh I wish I wasn't watching myself I always found it like a useful guide um yeah again I would be absolutely fascinated to speak to actors who needed to go to emotional places or anything in that setup that would be quite a fascinating yeah conversation but I found it useful to see myself Mm. I, th- I think it really affected um, pace, almost, not least the slight delay, obviously, with, with choreography and stuff, but that making it feel like a, a puppet, it really did. I was like, oh, look at my arm moving slightly more slowly than, than it is in real life. Um, that, was, that was quite fun and interesting, especially when, the, the ske- when, you, when one was quite small. That definitely felt like you were kind of a bit of a puppet master. Um, But in terms of pace, I found that we were all, and we never really acknowledged this, but we were speaking and moving a lot slower than we ever would on the live stage. Like, you know, these kind of like big, big reactions that were quite slow. And I was like, this is really bad acting, but I'm here for it because it works within the medium. Um, But yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't like naturalistic in, in any sense of the word. I felt like I was watching myself a lot in rehearsals when we were playing and messing around just to see the potential of what that little like avatar me could do. However, as soon as it came to like stumbling through or doing the live performance, I wasn't looking at myself at all. I wasn't even looking at the screens. I was like going to marks where I knew you you would be. I kind of, yeah, I think I'd sort of, I wasn't using them as referencing points. I was kind of just like living it. Mm-hmm. And that's back to the costume being seeing seeing yourselves in costume as well. It's that whole thing about the reflection of your you know performing with this this puppet, this performer, and that puppet should be in costume. So of course that helps. It helps hugely. Um, and it, yeah, so it sort of lends itself to a sort of melodrama of sorts, or a kind of comedy, or or some kind of yes, overt play that you're you're you're, you're having. Um, that's really fascinating stuff. I'm wondering whether Sita or Tom wanted to come in. Um, Sita, whether you have any thoughts? Yeah, so I was just struggling with my, my mute button there. Um, um, who is one of you the choreographer? Or or is that uh, just because um, Poppy said she's choreographically challenged? So, so uh, I, yeah, my background's in dance and physical theatre, but we did have a choreographer in and we did, we did little bits of our, our dances we do in the live show, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I'm just interested really as to how your your choreography changed, if you like, or how your approach to the choreography changed in in this particular context. Mm. Well, we we definitely experimented in a few different rehearsals to see what we could do because of that slight delay. There was a week, I remember, where we learnt the dance a beat before it happened on the screen. Um, there was that version, there was a version where we just played in the space and saw what happened. So I think we kind of ended with a bit of a mix of those two, just because I think uh, Boyd was giving us all these like delicious kind of, you know, cars and space space vistas and everything that we wanted to play with. But um, it definitely, I definitely felt that we needed to, oh, sorry, I need to put this on charge it's about to die we needed to almost do like a slower ver- I, I we needed to do like a slightly slower version of the dance so I keep doing this because this is the first move of the dance um and there were little motions that for example we do this for a money gesture at some points and I felt those might have disappeared a little bit because of the, all the stuff that was going on the stage so it would be fascinating to I want to watch it back in the in the final rendered version, see how it translated. That was how we uh, experimented it, with it during this form. I, I think in my mind, it's 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 broader 
brush brush strokes yeah. choreographically, Sita. So mm. I think, yeah, because the detail is potentially lost, it's like we were doing a lot of gestural things in the live show because our audience are two meters away. Um, and that that stuff, that stuff was lost. And um, but I also think we we didn't really worry about eventually whether or not we were on the beat because the audience like all audiences are willing to suspend their disbelief they don't mind a slight lag they're, they're, they're fine with it um but yeah it's it's it, it would have been good better perhaps um to use bigger movements and more kind of striking ones more slowly because that element of detail is 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 limited. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. Quite, um, oh sorry to carry on no no go on you I was just gonna sort of yeah add on what Grace said that I sort of I um I am like a puppy I am uh, it takes me a while to really get choreography in my body so I think I really enjoyed this like fusion where I knew I had some accents and some motions that I could hit some movements that I could hit but actually it was way more important about responding to the space so I I loved it as like a hybrid because we had yeah like Poppy said all of these different versions we had like a an Instagram version that we'd done which was very small in the square we had the stage show version we had the version that was one beat behind and eventually we sort of went for like well we have the, we have this toolkit we have these movements that we all know and we can hit them when we want but then actually it's far more about just responding and I loved that like when we were in the car I know that was quite a recent addition I was like it was so great to be able to sort of you know add few things that we had but I'm in a car so I can't dance like that so that's great um yeah for me it was the perfect hybrid I think <laughs> that's really helpful thank you yeah, yeah. I, I love the car actually I thought that was really effective um, sorry, but I was just going to ask Paul um not sure. specifically in relation to choreography just more general terms um if we had um, another group of a similar sort of physical theatre style to yourselves coming in. What what would your advice to them be? It's a really really good question. Yeah, um, I think I also, in reference to the last question, and this probably feeds into the current question, is I found myself taking like miniature steps, whereas like on stage I'd be strutting um everything everything had to be quite reduced but then you wanted kind of bold dynamic positions um yeah and it's, it's this thing of like I think throughout the whole lockdown I found it so frustrating being imprisoned in this box especially when it came like I was teaching dance online and it was it was just not big it was never big enough so then getting back on stage and like the first time I went back on stage was in the Brighton Spiegel tent and it's huge and I was like I can actually stretch my limbs I can actually play on a level where I'm like throwing out to you know a hundred people that way and like with with telepresence it's kind of somewhere in the middle because you can move bigger than just this box but at the same time, you are doing like little teeny weeny steps, you know, because your green screen is only that much across the floor. So I think that like that level of like there was a, there was a, a whisper of the frustration that I felt uh, throughout the throughout the lockdown still, I suppose. Like, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be being honest to say like it was the same level of like expansiveness as a performer because it, it's never going to be unless your whole room is green and it's enormous yeah but it was a little bit of an escape <laughs> from it yeah good um it's rather i just reminded of latency i just so this is almost performance for latency sometimes when we're talking about all these things and the sorts of experiments you did with the whole slapping sort of fighting thing and then slapping your thigh to make the sound it was all you timed it it obviously didn't you didn't you know what you learned was that you didn't have to do it you mustn't do it all at the same time you had to sort of give a okay I move and then you've got to move your head before I, when my hand gets to here, not when it gets to here. And, and, and I think you made a, I think um, Molly made a comment about it being rather like a kind of state stage, stage fighting, you know, doing a kind of dr dramatic stage scene. Um, yeah, there's, it's almost theatre for latency. And I wonder whether, boy, do you want to quickly just say something about some of the very first experiments you did um, um, about the, the sorts of learning how to use um, to find what methods of dramaturgy with latency and how to sort of explore yeah, performance in this space with all, with, all, with all the restrictions of technology and latency that come with it. 
Oh, you're on. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It's very much. Um, you know, my experience of this is now more as a director since I haven't actually played within it the same way that you know as as, as, as you now have played more inside a virtual director than I have. Um, that being said, my my acting training is is, is in mine um, as well, and in directing it and my experience of it, I, it feels like it's pretty much the same. And that it, when you're miming you are required to do extra gestures and extra um, activities to help make it translate to an audience. You know, you, you don't do an actual pick of a flower. You, you know, there's a talk, there's a, there, 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 there's a, you're, you're playing with a delay anyway. And to me, this is just an extension of that, but we have the advantage of that we're always working with a mirror. I think, um, I mean, it, it was so, I was so excited that you were, um, game for playing in that way because I, I personally have a lot of delight in the in the stage combat and so on a technical level I, I I think all of you did such an amazing job of of leading into those delays and making those nap sounds but in terms of the training I think it was at least for me exactly what I learned in stage combat and exactly what I learned in, in mime I'm curious yeah if, how, how to what degree that was the same for you or different or, or did, were there extra things that you found yourselves doing to make it work? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the sort of like the, the, the technicalities basically of, you know, you are never hitting someone obviously in stage combat and you're making the nap if you're being hit most of the time, unless that's going to be weird for staging or whatever. I think that was all fine. I think the thing I found uh, hard every time was like what you would normally do is if I was going to slap Grace in real life I would obviously have her face <laughs> um, and so I never wanted to look at the screen because it didn't work for that so I had this sort of strange thing where I just had to sort of feel it by like a glance at the screen and then sort of just step into it um, which definitely you know I'll wasn't perfect at all but it was interesting because I, I tried with sort of like maybe if I put my hand at exactly this space and it's going to match up with this you know tiny little dot of pen that I'll do on the green screen and I was like that's not going to work it, we're not dealing with these sort of things and I think when I got that out of my head and I just went for you know quick glance at the screen and then just go for it and feel it and sell it um then that's enough and also like what you said Boyd in uh, many of our sessions like we're not here for like absolute precision no one is here to be like that's not real you know we're here for the joy of it and if you're both having joy and you're both selling it then then that's gonna be great yeah um my favorite sort of physical moment because i didn't get to slap anyone unfortunately um so <laughs> but, <laughs> but i really enjoyed when grace would like pull me from off the ledge because again I just couldn't face the screen at all so I just kind of had to like put my hand up and again just that sort of like the joy of feeling it and sometimes hearing Grace be like oh no my my hand has disappeared oh no and knowing that was my cue to like move and sort of communicating that way um yeah it was a real as soon as as you were saying Molly as soon as I stopped being like oh god oh god I need to be a centimeter this way um, then that's when, yeah, because those are the bits as well that people are going to enjoy watching because it's just silly and fun. Um, but yeah, that was my favourite sort of physical trying to work it out moment for sure. I'm I'm so I'm so interested in what you said, Boyd, about like uh, translating, like the, how you amplify and sustain certain movements in mind to translate it and how that relates to telepresence the what the, the thoughts haven't formulated you could probably do a whole phd in that though but i'm like wow that's so interesting <laughs> thank you um we got tom did you, did you want to say, say something quickly to our question you wanted yeah. to have me yeah i'd like to address the question to boyd actually because um i mean totally non-stop the whole the way through in what you were doing i mean you, you reminded me of like a one band person you know you're playing the drum you're strumming the banjo you're on the harmonica you, you know it's everything happening all at once and i just wonder if you comment on the pressures and the 
the role that you had there? And do you feel like a performer <laughs> or a marionette or what? Doesn't it? Yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's a very good question. Um, from a sort of engineering perspective or software development perspective, it's really insane because it's, I've I've now constructed a tool that only I can play. Um, because I'm, I'm literally. I mean, it's the advantage of, of building it yourself is you can customize it. And so as I got more and ex more excited about the different things we could do with this particular Sugar Fix show, I started adding more and more features. I, I should show you some screenshots of the change in the software over time. There's so many more buttons. And so and like when I anytime I show like just the basic version of it to anyone, they get really freaked out because there's so many buttons, so many different things. And it's now even like worse. I've got I've got like you know eight special music cues just for only the music and sugar fix. I've got you know special buttons for just your transitions, all these different things. And so, you know, it is it's a lot to keep track of in terms of like I'm literally bu sometimes building it like minutes before we're starting, um, just because the way time is right now. And so I haven't quite mastered it either. And so you know I. I could see myself wanting to like like now I'm like okay now I've got the tool kind of in place now I'm ready to rehearse uh, but you know I haven't <laughs> I've been sort of just winging it each time and and what's great about working with like improvising actors like like you all you're able to kind of you make my mistakes look like less of a mistake as well but in terms of like an instrument I think you're absolutely right it feels like a yeah, one of those street musicians that has the drum and the, the horn and all these different things that you got to keep track of, only you know. Um, my goal, though, is to figure out how to like now extract out of this and make a simplified tool that others can use. And in that spirit, I know we're about out of time, so it's kind of a big no, question. No, but, um, I'm curious, like as as performers or just like for all of us, um, what role would telepresent theater or you know, a tool like this play in a completely post pandemic world like would like are there features aspects of this that you could see incorporating into your you know your professional theater lives now um, and you know what would those be and like what would you you know imagine the software completely works and is easy for anyone theoretically to use are there other things you would see yourself as using it for or applying in this year craft to being a, a stage performer? That's really interesting. <laughs> we might not have to, I mean, we've talked about it loads, haven't we, girls? Because we're our stage show has projection in it, and we you know, we would love in the future to be able to have some sort of fusion. I'd love like um, uh, 1927 is a this company that instantly comes to my mind who insane with their projection. And I, I love uh, live performers interacting with projection and that sort of, yeah, the Alice through the looking glass thing, I, I'm really into that sort of thing. So I would, I would love in the future, and it definitely would be something that we would want to do if it's possible and within budgets and all of that sort of thing, of having a, a show that incorporated both, having performers, you know, um, slipping through the screen, suddenly they're in the screen and they're out again. That's something that I would love to do. And then another version as well is, you know, sort of what we've done here, we've actually gone, well, we have this world from a, a different, um, medium that we've created and we've done a telepresence version of it. I mean, that would be so exciting in many different ways, whether that's a stage play or a, or a short story or whatever, you know, sort of saying, well, this is just the medium that you can put your, you know, art into and create a, a, a different version of it. Um, but yeah, so sort of together and separate. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's something that will, it's going to make our, our this show more rich for sure. And I also I also just think kind of practically uh, we do we do read throughs and like pre residency rehearsals we we do them on Zoom and that's not that's not just because of COVID that's also just like t time set we continue to do that even when we can meet in person because we're spread out over London um, so in terms of just being able to like as a director if you're gathering your cast together for the read through whack them in different environments play with them have fun with them you know as opposed to just people with their scripts on zoom um 
that can also just be a really fun like to establish that play from the get-go that's such a nice idea yeah that would Absolutely. be great. from a um because we approached this project from a sort of a com comedic place um the idea of comedy troops utilizing this um software so that that so that they're not having to go out and sort of spend money on locations and things like that. Um, they get everything with this technology and it kind of gives it a sort of playfulness as well because of how um, you can customise what the sets look like. You can make them surreal, you can make them camp, you can make them whatever they want. It's, um, I think it frees up. Uh, yeah, for, for, I was thinking comedy troops because they are constantly looking for different scenarios and different settings. I think it's a dream for things like that as well. It's made for clouds. Yeah, it? yeah, made for clouds. <laughs> yes, you do. But I think you're right, you know, I mean, using this technology, you can save half your budget and half your time um, to do to do the sorts of things that, that are script read throughs that need a bit of body movement in it as well. And it's not just Zoom, but it can be you know, for the, the, the whole possibilities of what you can do with the full body image in, in space and those sorts of things and become really really very useful in, in in the kind of rehearsal script writing process um so for sure auditions as well auditions That's and auditions as well absolutely yes yeah quite Speaking of that, I, I'm, I know we're out of time, so don't feel like if we want to answer this offline, that's fine. But another question is like, as an actor, could you see yourself, if you had access to something like this, using it to prepare for a role in another medium? Like, would it would it be useful if you could see yourself in, you know, if you're if you're rehearsing for a stage play, you don't usually get to see the set till the very end. Would it would it do you think help your craft to be able to see yourself in that environment much earlier than? when you're on the physical stage? That's a good question. Certainly more than being in your bedroom, I would say. 100%. And Molly, you've been doing quite, you've been doing some self tape stuff like that, haven't you, in, in lockdown? So I imagine that, like, it can feel so dry when you're just with a script against the right mood. So just to kind of unleash your own imagination in those circumstances, it would be super helpful. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it would definitely aid any performance. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. The auditions, yeah, side of it is really interesting. And yeah, definitely, like the idea of, of being able to be on stage. I think almost every stage actor would say like, oh, I can't wait to get in the to get to the space. You know, it's completely different. And when you're rehearsing, you crave that. So that would be, um, yeah, that would be so beneficial. Great. We've, we've, we've run out of time for our meeting and we've gone over our time. But I, I, I just want to say it's been really, really great conversation and really good ideas and fantastic response and I've really enjoyed watching your development through the residency and, and huge thanks to Boyd as well for this one um, for coming in as our guest researcher so I really do appreciate that Boyd thank you and yeah. um, Boyd we will we will pick up on a few things with you Boyd if, if I may afterwards just perhaps via email just on on some of the technical things you're talking about and how this has changed your your platform with the virtual director and the sorts of things you're doing and we'd like to include as much of that as you would like in in, in our our, our um, future case study on on the gutter snipe theatre residency um, with images diagrams any bits of ephemera that might have appeared along the way that we can capture and use as part of our story that we tell about this residency through the case study and um that would include all of your of course gutter snipe theater is featured as the main part of that case study so we want to make sure we get all those bits correct so it'll be you know i mean i'll be emailing you as well i'm assuming the title of course is it is it sugar is, is it sugar fix or sugar fix versus the illuminati did you decide on a final title for your performance or? sugar fix versus the illuminati okay that's what i thought it was but i wasn't sure when i was reading through the script earlier on great well that's how we're going to title the the the, the, the case study the project well of course we got a snipe theater um and, and we'll just we'll we'll title that as performed and performed written directed by by the three of you is that right go to snipe theater and then being the three of you okay perfect well, then we'll do it that way um and and i'll let you know how that goes and of course the other thing to also mention is that hina will be in contact with you hina patel our project manager about your honorarium and um she'll be in touch and do, do contact hina as well or she'll be in contact with you about um an invoice for that sort of thing and, and all the things you need. I think it was 
Um, I'm not sure who made the original um, contract arrangement, but but anyway, I'm sure between you, yeah, okay, I'm sort you'll, you'll sort it out. But between the three of you, maybe Poppy will will liaise with 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 Hina on that one then. And that's that's our final session. So well, our final fantastic. Final to, um, firstly, just say thank you so much to, to all of you. It's been a joy. Um, I imagine you're going to need your amazing equipment back. Um, who should no, be talking no. about that? No, no, Molly. That that equipment is now going to now is remains with the company, and that's our intention. Is that you you keep to keep the green green screens, the cameras, the lights. They're all for you to keep. Tough to deal. And but we hope that you will be able to use those in future productions and future work. So, so hold on to them, and and we will be letting you. If there's more information you need about how to do this sort of work again, um, that will be available directly from from us from the team. Um, you can contact me. Or, or there'll be information. Of course, we hope everything on our website is, is useful for you to pull pull up pull apart and have a look at and do some of this stuff yourself. But we're always here to help um, throughout the project and, and afterwards. And the project runs until May, so we're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So we've got new residencies lined up. I mentioned the other day, Improbable are going to be doing a residency with us, so that's really, really exciting. And also Red Ladder Theatre, we're going to be doing another, another residency with us as well. We've got one more we're going to be doing, which we haven't quite quite confirmed yet. But you yeah. Us for, um, invites, I'm sure, you know. It, it yeah, the, of course, I'll let, let you know. Fantastic, yeah. yes. We'll be in touch about our live shows as well. Because yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank I just want to say you know, absolutely enjoy to work with. Um, it was so much fun. You know the kinds of actors that, that make it like the research really interesting, and I learned a lot just you know watching you interact and thinking of new ways to, to kind of work with the software. So thank you for just being present and being willing to explore and try new things. That was super fun. Um, if I have some follow up questions, uh, is it right if I contact you to? Um, so. Sure. I, Great. And also, yeah, I, I would actually like to talk with uh, the whole uh, Brighton team as well, also from a technical pr uh, perspective. Uh, for the Absolutely, boys. Yeah, yeah. And please just keep copying us in, in, in any further correspondence and questions. Copy, copy us in and, and we'll we'll keep keep the keep the conversation going. But um, definitely, Boyd. And we'll I'll be in. I know you're very busy, Boyd. You've got a new you start just starting a new new post at the University of Coventry. And I can imagine how stressful that is trying to find your way around and trying to finish off your PhD at the same time. So I don't want to stress you with any, any more <laughs> requests of your time. <laughs> uh, but um. You know, th this this type of work is 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 what I, everything for me is about. So I I, I try I, I prioritize it even if um, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm very happy to keep talking and working because this is I think this is the kind of I, I think we're on the verge of something actually new about performance in these in these third spaces. So Absolutely. it is definitely a priority for me. So I'm happy to keep uh, keep talking and collaborating. Fantastic. Uh -huh. we'll do it. We'll be in touch again very, very soon. I'll be running running stuff past you with this case study. <laughs> All right. So much. Enjoy your rest of your evening. Thanks again. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye.